Hello and welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics at CSU. Today's topic is my favorite sequence in all of mathematics, the Catalan numbers. So the Catalan numbers are extremely useful in combinatorics. They come up in a lot of different places. And in fact, Richard Stanley, uh, a famous combinatorialist, wrote a book called Catalan Numbers just on these numbers, this particular sequence that has 214 combinatorics applications of the Catalan numbers listed in here. And I'm sure there are more waiting to be discovered. So the Catalan numbers are a sequence that are defined recursively by the, the sequence C0, C1, C2, et cetera, where the initial value is C0 equals one. And then for any n greater than or equal to one, Cn is expressed in terms of the previous terms as follows. It's C0 times Cn minus one plus C1 times Cn minus two plus C2 times Cn minus three down to Cn minus one times C0. So notice the subscripts on the first factors increase by one each time and the subscripts on the second factors decrease each time. Let's write out some examples to see how this recursion works. So we start at C0 equals one. Then C1 is just C0 times C0, which is one times one, which is one. But then C2 is C0, C1 plus C1, C0, which is one times one plus one times one is two. And now we can kind of see it visually from here on out. C3 is C0 times C2 plus C1 times C1 plus C2 times C0, which is two plus one plus two, which is five. And now if we do the formula for four as one final example, C0 times C3 plus C1 times C2 plus C2 times C1 plus three C3 times C0. So we get the one times five here plus two times one plus two times one plus one times five. And altogether that's 14. So the first few Catalan numbers are one, one, two, five, 14. And if you see this sequence coming up, if you see 1, 1, 2, 5, 14, you might guess that you have the Catalan numbers as your sequence. And let's see one place in which these numbers do come up. So we've seen counting lattice paths before where we have no restrictions. We're just trying to go from one corner to another in a grid. And a dick path is a variant of that uh, lattice path problem. A dick path of height n or length 2n is a lattice path from 0, 0 in the plane to 4, 4 where you take unit steps up or right, such that the path always stays above the diagonal. And it can be on the diagonal. It can hit the diagonal, like at, at 0, 0 or at 1, 1 here. But otherwise, it never goes below the diagonal. You can't have an edge like that. Um, it, you know, that's not allowed. So how many paths always stay above this diagonal in general? Can we find a formula for that? How many dick paths are there of length n? So let's let d sub n be the number of dick paths of height n. And we can just try to calculate this number for some small values of, of n. So for d sub 0, that's just 1 because you're going from 0, 0 to itself. It's just one path. And then similarly, for d1 equals 1, you can't go to the right and up. That would be below the diagonal. So we only have one path that stays above the diagonal for the 1 by 1 square. For the 2 by 2 square, you have two paths that stay above the diagonal, the zigzag and the one that just goes up and then over. So, that, so d sub 2 is 2. Then I claim that d sub 3 is 5. Let's try to draw out all of the dick paths of, of height 3. Well, you can either go all the way up and all the way over, or you can go up by 2 and then start going over and up, or go up by 2, over by 2, back to the diagonal, and then up and right. The fourth possibility is going up by 1, um, over, and then uh, do a dick path of length 2 here. And so we have two possibilities there until we get to that final zigzag pattern. And we've run out of possibilities. So there are five possibilities here. And notice one, one, two, five are the first few Catalan numbers. This isn't a coincidence. So let's try to prove, or at least get the idea of the proof of why d sub n actually equals c sub n, the nth Catalan number for all n. So we know that they have the same initial values. And so we just need to show that d sub n satisfies the same recursion as c sub n. Um, to review recursions, go back to the recursion video. This is a method of how we show that something is equal to a recursively defined sequence. So we need to show that d sub n is d0 times dn minus 1 plus d1 times dn minus 2 down to dn minus 1 d0. And let's consider the following picture to, to understand why this is. We're going to sort of count in two ways. So to count the dick paths of height n, consider the first time that the path returns to the diagonal. Let's say it's at height i, i comma i. 
Well, then the rest of this path must lie strictly above the diagonal. So we can draw this orange line that is bounded by. And we have some dick path of, of height i minus 1 from here to here that's then connected by these two lines. And then similarly, we have to finish with a dick path of length n minus i. So there's d sub n minus i choices here, and then d sub n minus, or sorry, d i minus 1 and d sub n minus i here. And so you multiply those together to get the product number of possibilities. And then finally, we sum these possibilities over all the possibilities of what i is, what height you first return to the diagonal at, even if that possibility is n. And that gives you that recursion. So we know the Catalan numbers count the number of dick paths. Let's see this proof sort of written out a little more visually as an example. Why is C3, the number of dick paths of, of height 3, equal to C0 times C2 plus C1 times C1 plus C2 times C0? So we know that C3 is 5. And we're going to sort those five dick paths into, um, into subclasses that correspond to these products. So if the first return to the diagonal is at height 1, then you start with this one dick path counted by C0, and then these two dick paths of height 2 going from that point to the rest of it. And we fill that in. So that's why it's C0 times C2. Similarly, if the first return to the diagonal is at height 2, then, uh, the, then first we get a C1 number of possibilities here by drawing our little orange line. And, um, and we get C1 possibilities times C1 possibilities to finish up the path. Finally, um, we have, uh, why is it C2 times C0 for the first return to the diagonal being up there? Well, now, if we never go back to the diagonal, we're bounded by this dashed red line instead, which means we just have a dick path of height 2 that we're then connecting to the top and bottom vertex um, by, by little lines there to make the two possible dick paths. So that's why it's, it's really C2 is the number of possibilities in this case. So there's a visual of why dick paths satisfy this Catalan recurrence. And then the question is, do they have an explicit formula, right? Can we count them in some way? Can we solve this recursion? That's actually quite difficult to do uh, in, the, in the realm of Catalan numbers. But it turns out there is a formula. So the theorem is that c sub n is 1 over n plus 1 times 2n choose n. Now, what we've done with previous formulas, like for the Fibonacci numbers, is plug them into the recursion and show that it, it satisfies that recursion. That's actually very difficult to do using this formula and that gigantic recursion. You get something that's just as hard as trying to prove this directly. And so instead, we'll do a combinatorial proof this time. We'll show that this counts the number of dick paths of height n. This is a quite involved proof. It's not in the textbook, but I thought I would put it in the video as uh, something that just the, the sort of outline of how the proof would go to give you an idea of, of, how, of where this formula comes from. So step one of figuring this out is first notice that the number of dick paths from 0, 0 to n, n is equal to the number of paths from 0, 0 to n, n plus 1 staying strictly above the diagonal. And the way we, and these are called extended dick paths. The way we can make it is just extend this path by a, another red up edge and then shift the whole thing up to be over here. And this path will definitely stay always strictly above the diagonal because we shifted it up by one. Um, so it'll never touch that blue line. And since we shifted it up by one, it ends at this n comma n plus one. So there's a bijection here between dick paths and extended dick paths. And we're going to look at extended dick paths. We're also going to sometimes think of the sequence of ups and rights that determine this sequence, this up, up, right, up, up, right, right. Notice to get from this dick path to the extended dick path, we just put a u at the beginning. OK, so now that we're thinking about extended dick paths, let's count the extended dick paths. Step two, notice that all the extended dick paths start with an up step, because that's how we construct them. And then they have n u's and n r's after them. So if we wanted to just overcount without worrying about whether it stays above the diagonal, 2n choose n is the number of possible sequences that start with u and then have n u's and n r's in some order. So here's an example for two u's and two r's after a u. There are six of them, four choose two. Um, but not all of these correspond to dick paths. In fact, we'll see that just the top two here correspond to dick paths. And in order to get the 1 over n plus 1 times 2n choose n dividing by 3, we want to sort these into groups of 3. So you see I have two columns of 3. And the idea is we're going we're gonna to make these groups so that each of these groups of 3 contain just one extended dick path. And that's how we'll take this 6 divided by 3 in the end. So step three is given a sequence of n plus 1 u's and n r's that start with u. 
um, we notice that there's actually a unique way we can cut the sequence in half and shift it. So making a cyclic shift means cut it in half and make the black uh, move the, all the black letters um, to the other side of the word, right? Kind of wrap around, starting with that U. And um, there's a unique point we can shift it so that it does make one of these extended dick paths that stays above the diagonal. So here's an example in this case, if I cut it this U, I'm taking this black tail and this, um, this orange beginning path and switching them. And what I get is the black path starts and then I put the orange path on top and that one stays above the diagonal. So how do we find that U? We actually pick the U to be the, the up step that's just after the last maximal, maximally low point that's, that's maximally below the diagonal. So this is the point that's two steps below the diagonal. This point is only one step below the diagonal, but you look for the, the point that's most below the diagonal and the top one of those. And then the up step following that, if you switch that, you'll see that the, this, the, remain, the remaining path has to stay above the diagonal because somehow this is still the minimal point below the diagonal, even after you shift it. So that's, you know, I'm not going into all the details there, but that's the idea of how we can find this unique um, dick path in our groupings. And now step four is to actually make those groupings. So since every sequence that we're considering has n plus one up steps, and every n plus one possible up steps to cut at and, and shift around, then, um, we, we can consider all of those as the same and we've, we've grouped n plus one sequences per dick path. So you're considering all the shifts um, starting at any of the u's to be in the same group. Um, and only one of them is gonna be a dick path. So each group corresponds to one extended dick path. And so we have n plus one things in each group. And that means we can divide two n choose n by n plus one to get the number of extended dick paths. Let's look at that example for n equals two again. We had these six sequences of ups and rights. And these two, so up, 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 right, right, that certainly stays above the diagonal. And up, up, right, up, right, those stay above the diagonal. Here's the other shifts of these sequences. So starting with this dick path, starting at this U, going U, U, R, R, U, that's this next sequence, right? U, U, R, R, U. And then similarly, starting at, at the third U, U, R, R, and then wrap around to the front, U, U, that's the, the third sequence in this group. So I've illustrated it here, you know, this U corresponds to that U and this third U really corresponds to that one. Um, and each of these have three elements because there are three U's. And so that's how we sorted our two N choose N things into groups of size N plus one that correspond to the dick paths. Okay, so now I wanna talk about a fun application of this to voting. Um, so where do Catalan numbers come up in, in elections? Um, so ballot sequences are another object that's counted by Catalan numbers. Suppose there's two candidates, uppity and rightly, and I named them so that it's like up and right, like the, the um, edges. And say there's two N voters, and N voters prefer uppity and N prefer rightly. So it's gonna be a tie. They form a line to vote and the ballots are counted one at a time what's the probability that rightly is never ahead in the count? Even though they end up tied, what's the, what's the chance that rightly is never looking like he's ahead as they pull, as they, as they add up the tallies? So it turns out that rightly never being ahead corresponds to the sequence of U's and R's corresponding to a dick path. So um, let's look at how this happens. If we go, if it's uppity, uppity, rightly, uppity, rightly, like that, um, so, if I, if I plot that out, if I go up, up, right, up, right, right, whenever I get back to the diagonal, I'm tied. So we can even take score here, right? If we're, if we're tallying as we count these votes, who has how many votes? So uppity here has one and then two, and then rightly gets one. So we add one there and then three, one and three, two and so on. Well, this is actually giving us the coordinates of these points, right? Zero, one, zero, two, uh, one, two, one, three, two, three, three, three. And we can see that when we're, when we're tied, three, like three comma three, that's exactly when we're on a, a diagonal. And so tied means on the diagonal, uh, uppity winning means you're above the diagonal and rightly winning means you're to the right of the diagonal. And so if you never, if rightly is never winning, then um, that means it's a dick path. 
So now we can calculate this probability because the total number of upright sequences you can have is 2n choose n, because you choose which n spots the up voters uh, line up in. And then um, the number such that r is never ahead is the Catalan number, which we know is 1, 1 over n plus 1 times 2n choose n. We calculated that with the theorem. And so the probability that rightly is never ahead is this divided by that, which is 1 over n plus 1 times 2n choose n divided by n choose n, which is just 1 over n plus 1. So there's a 1 over n plus 1 chance that rightly is never ahead in that election. OK, so now you try. Um, how many lattice paths from 0 comma 0 to 4 comma 4 stay either on or below the diagonal? So these are sort of like opposite dig paths. Instead of wanting to stay above the diagonal, we want to stay below. And the hint is that these are actually pretty much the same as counting if it's above the diagonal. Um, it's not, not much different there, because you can just reflect it to get a, a back to a dig path. So that's all I wanted to say about the Catalan numbers today, and we'll see you next time.